following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We have arrived at the Carusius of Mercury, the number eight, with the wings of the spirit always open. Our canon number eight is uh, associated, as you already know, if you read the uh, website where we talk about the two witnesses which are related with the two forces the two vital forces which are symbolized in many religions with the moon and the sun Here, we have to emphasize the deep meaning of the letter Het, which is related with life. Remember that the tree of life is called Chaim, Otzaim, and there are many words in Hebrew written with Het. Like Hayot, which means living creatures, or Hayut, which means life force, and uh, different names, like the word, for instance, Enoch, which is written oh, with Het, Enoch. So, as you see, uh, the letter Het is related with two previous letters that we were talked in the previous lectures. The letter Vav and the letter Zain. The letter Zain is in the left and the letter Vav is in the right of the shape of the letter Het united, of course, by that uh, invisible life force, which is, as uh, it is explained there very clear, the Kundalini, the life force of God. And uh, we explain that it is related with the law of the cosmic common trogo auto egocrat, which is uh, in plain English the reciprocal force that descends and ascends in different ways. 
There are two words in Hebrew that explain the descent of that force from the ends of or and the reascension or return of that force. The descension or the descent of that force into the universe from the ends of or is called uh, is uh, is explained in the letter Vav that we explain and we talk about very extensive in other lectures. But the returning of that life force into its own source is related with the letter Zain. So the movement of that energy descending and ascending is of course symbolized in the letter Het. That is the force of life active in the macrocosmos and in the microcosmos. So let us pay attention here because there are two words related with it and also uh, when we talk about the tree of life we have to talk also about the tree of knowledge because both trees share the roots and this is very important because without the knowledge of one tree we cannot understand the other tree these two trees therefore that's why they are uh, in the book of Genesis in the beginning the tree of life and the tree of knowledge together in the beginning of creation of course we know very well that are symbolic trees and that they embrace a lot but the tree of good and evil in the Hebrew it says Tob Verra good and evil. Remember that V is always and and Ra this word uh, is translated as evil. Indeed good and evil as is understood by humanity do not exist because good is something that uh, is pleasant to the person and evil is something that is displeasant unpleasant to the person so really uh, the true meaning of good and evil is something that uh, we have to study because really we have to set involution and evolution or dissension and ascension that should be the translation or lunar and solar that should be or right and wrong it depends how we approach these two words because of course if you go to into the Egyptian pantheon you find that the god Ra is the solar god. And we explained in the previous lectures that Keter, Hohma, and Bina together are called in Egyptian terms Osiris Ra. The god Ra itself is related with uh, the solar light with the sun and we talked an extensive many times that the third aspect of the unknowable which is called Ains of Or is related with the solar light that's why it's called the solar absolute in any sun star of the infinite space is in itself the physical vehicle of the ends of or meaning that the light or in Hebrew of the limitless light expresses through the sun or the star any star 
our star, our sun that shines during the day and it is the center of this solar system is one of them. So therefore, that sun, that force is called in Egyptian terms Ra, and you know that. There are many symbols in Egypt. But that Ra explains the dissension. That's why you, when you read the Hebrew Bible, you find the Ra and Ra. Tob and Ra, the Ra. So the is Bav. And we explain that Bav is a force that descends from Keter down. That's the ray of creation. That is, of course, the spinal column in the human being. So that Yod, or force of light that comes from the ends of or appears in Keter and descends through the letter Bav in the universe. But uh, that is the solar force of the ends of or, which is Ra. That's why the letter Resh in Hebrew, um, among the 22 letters, explains the beginning of the end. In this case, we said from the beginning, we see the, the solar light coming out from the absolute. And that is precisely uh, uh, the way in which that light begins its journey in order to end as uh, the force that descends from above into the lower kingdoms or the lower levels. The word Ra is written with Ayin, which means I, the I. The light. Remember that through the eye we see the light. So here we ha we find that word that is translated as evil. Really, the meaning is the light descending from the beginning down. That is what we call in Gnosticism involution. Meaning that the the, the ray, the force, the light is descending from the ends of from the absolute into the universe and ends in the ninth sphere. And that is precisely the force which is called Adam. And it's necessary here to talk about these uh, terms in order for you to memorize. Because in Kabbalah, Adam is related with the letter Yod. It's related with the force that descends from above. That's why the primordial man is called Adam Kadmon. And that's precisely that light which is Keter. It's called Adam Kadmon, the primordial man. Arikampin is also called. But when we talk about that force descending from Keter down in all the Sephiroth, even to clip off, that is Ra, the solar light descending through Bab. This is how we have to understand that word that is translated in Hebrew as evil. But really evil itself, we will say, is just a matter of saying how the four descends. We are not talking here about bad, a bad force only an evolving energy that comes from the absolute. But that force needs to return into the absolute. That is the law of the cosmic common trogo auto egocrat. Because if that light doesn't return into the absolute, into the ends of or, that will dissolve. That is the law of the ends of or, to give and to receive. That is the cosmic trogo auto ego crat, and that's related with the letter het. Because the life returns to Zain, which is similar, as you know, to the letter Vav, but is related with the feminine aspect. Because the woman, the female aspect, is the force that 
reflects hmm, the image of God. Remember that it's written that man, the terrestrial man, or the heavenly man, is made into the image of God. But that is always made into the womb of the mother, into the womb of the woman. So that's why the woman receives that image. The letter Zayin, the symbol of it. But that, you see, that letter Zayin, or that aspect of returning, is related with the other Ob, Eve, Chava. And that is precisely the action of returning the, the, the fire from the bottom to the top again, to the father. That is to return the life of the father up, and the mother does it. And that's precisely the great meaning of life. Haya, or hai. Haim, het. That's why uh, this, is, this term in a Hebrew language, lahayim, to life. For that, we had to transmute the sexual energy. Of course, this is the meaning of what we said here, tob. Because if you examine the letter or the word tob, which in Hebrew, when you said uh, good morning, you said uh, boker tob, good night, laila tob. So tob, t or tet in this case, vav, and bet, tob means good. But here you find the word ob before the letter tet, which is the symbol of the serpent, which is a lecture that is going to be explained in the next lecture, the number nine, which is precisely the serpent. But here you find the, the duality of the force, the serpent, het, the life, which descends and ascends. And that's precisely how you see, for instance, the symbol in the macrocosmos, how the solar light comes from the sun, enters in the atmosphere of the earth, thanks to the moon. We know very well that the moon transforms the life of the earth. And that is 100% proven, how the moon influences the earth. Both earth and moon are over the symbol of feminine forces. You know that the light that shines from the moon is a reflection of the sun. Meaning that the moon wouldn't shine if it wasn't for the sun. But it is the same light. But the light of the, of the moon reflects, returns, in other words, that light toward the sun in the transformation of the energies in this planet Earth. And this is how you see how in different religions you always find the sun and the moon related with this life which comes and goes in different ways. It's coming into my mind, for instance, the Mayan Bible, the Popol Vuh. There in the Popol Vuh is written about the twins, which many translators translated as male twins. But really, when you read the Popol Vuh, it's really only about children, two children. These two children could be a male and female, and really, they were male and female, but in the book, the translators, they always say that this Hunapu and Higgs Balanque, the two twins, which later, after doing all the great tasks in that Bible, they become the moon and the sun. 
Hunapu says become the sun, and Ixbalanke becomes the moon. But they are twins. And those twins remind us Adam and Eve. Yeah, Apollo and Aramis are also twins. Sun and moon. So you find that, of course, symbol of sun and moon in many religions. <coughs> and here, of course, in the Bible, the sun is Adam, which we always associate with Pingala, because in Sanskrit, the solar force that descends and is symbolized in the letter Vav is Pingala. Uh -huh. And the lunar force, which should ascend from the sex up to the brain, is called Ida. And that's uh, related with Eve. Uh -huh. Adam and Eve. Pingala and Ida. But also in Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic terms, we said Adam is Od, Odi, and Eve is Obi. There, this is, are the two witnesses, Adam and Eve, Od and Ob, or Pingala and Ida, or in Taoism, they said it Yang and Yin. Yang is positive, Yin is feminine. And in this case, in the Mayan Bible, Hunapu is the sun, the positive force. And Ixbalanke is a feminine, the moon. They are twins. And we had to study that from that point. Because the great marvels that are done in the Popol Vuh, the Mayan Bible, are done by these two twins. And of course, these two twins are the children of a virgin, which is called Ishkik, that was pregnant because other, uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, individual who was hidden, the head of this individual was hidden in, the, in a gourd, you know, the tree? I guess it's not a tree, but a, a, a vine, right? The gourd. Certain gourd, which was the head of this god, uh, spit it into this virgin, and she became pregnant. You know that the gourd symbolizes the head. It's always a symbol related with the head. Anyone that uh, celebrates Halloween knows that the pumpkin gourd is the head. And of course, is a intelligence, the, the head, Keter, spitting, getting pregnant with the two, the two twins. Hunapu and his balanque. In the Mayan Bible, you find always all of these names associated, of course, with that language. But there is a, a word that is always appearing there many times. The word Vukub, which means seven. Vukub Unapu means the seventh hunter. There is also another word that is called Vukub Kakich, which is related with the seven Capital sins. And it, when you read that, of course, uh, uh, you know Kabbalah, because the Mayan Bible or the Mayans were Kabbalists. There are many books written by the Mayans that you find in America, where they explain beautifully. But if you know Kabbalah, you understand what they are written there. Because as we explain in other lectures, the science of Kabbalah that we teach here was brought to the earth, to this planet earth, by an angel. And that angel was Metraton, or Metatron, whose name was Enoch, when he was alive, the prophet Enoch. Of course, that was in ancient times. 
So his knowledge spread a lot among the Atlanteans, Mayans. Because the Mayans and the Atlanteans are the same thing. Of course, when we talk about the Mayans, we are talking about the golden age of that, that uh, uh, root race, Atlantean race. Because when Christopher Columbus came to America, he discovered just the leftover remnants of the Mayans, which is not related, of course, in the age of Kali Yuga. But we're talking about the golden age of the Atlantean civilization, where the Kabbalah was being taught by Metraton, which later on the Shemites took it and brought it into the Aryan life. But it is, of course, a sign that belongs to the universe. The 22 letters related with the language of God that we have to learn in order to understand his ways. So as we said there in the Mayan pantheon, you find beautiful books written, prophetics. And here we have to talk about prophets. Because the root of prophecy comes precisely from the two witnesses. Which many Kabbalists, many great uh, initiates associate the two witnesses with two great prophets. Elias or Elijah is always appearing there as one of the main prophets of the two witnesses. But who is this Elias? Of course, we won't deny that this great prophet exists. He's a great master. He's an eon. But the meaning of Elijah means the God Jehovah or the Lord Iao. Because El, or the word Elijah is written with Aleph, Lamed, which means God, El. And the other letters is Yod, He, Bab. This is the end. Yod, He, Bab. No more. Yod, He, Bab means Yod, He, Bab. Iao, if we translate it. Eliao. This is how you said it in Hebrew. The prophet Eliao. This is which my God is Eliah. Or Jah. So obviously, E-A-O are the letters that go directly into the Trimurti or the Tree of Life. The first triangle. Keter, Chochma, Bina. Keter, Yod. Chochma, He, and Bina, Bav. That is Iao. That's Eliao. And that's the force that descends. The solar light. Because Eliao, or Elijah, this is, is a prophet of the sun. The vehicle of the solar light. That descends into the earth and disappears. We're talking here about the meaning of that force in the name of this great prophet. Because he has a, is one of the prophets that appears and disappears in the Bible. The highest of the prophets. Because it symbolizes the highest force of God. Eliao. Iao. Or we will say it in other words, Jah. Elijah. So, behold here the first witness. And that first witness descends in us as Pingala, or uh, symbolizes Adam, because Elijah is always related with the mind. It's that prophet that receives the knowledge from God and commands from God that performs the will of God. The Spigala, you receive through it. Because in the spinal column descends, that's for of Eliao. But ascends from the bottom to Zain. As a prophet Enoch. If you examine the force of Enoch, 
het, nun, bav, kaf. And the whole name is precisely the symbol of the ascension. Because nun is the Messiah, the force in the sex, the sperm, the seed. Hidden within the waters, the sexual waters. And head is the life. And when you said bav, it's because that force ascends through the spinal column. In order to form the cup of here, we will say it in the top of the head. That will be the meaning of hinak. That has the force that ascends and make you a prophet. Because that force, when it's reaching that, the cup or the kippa, we will say, on the top of the head, make you an initiate, a prophet. But for that, you have to work with the Enneagram. With the nine steps after when you reach mastery. You see, and that is related with the letter Zain. The ascension of the force to the ninth Sephiroth. That is related with the prophet Enoch. That's why the two witnesses is written in Kabbalah is Elias and Enoch. So people are waiting for these two prophets to come physically. Meaning this is internal. Has nothing to do with outside. It's inside. Our, our forces. Because the forces of the microcosmos dwell within the Micro. Everything is inside of us. Jesus, the Christ, is inside. Elias is inside. Enoch is inside. Moses is inside. This is that some Kabbalist says, no, it's not Enoch, the other witness. The other witness is Moses. Well, Moses is Mem and Shin Moshe. From the He, which is the uterus. He is the uterus, the feminine aspect of Mem, which is the waters of Shamayim, the fi fiery waters where the Shin, the fire, is hidden. And if you trust me with that, there, behold, Moses, which is willpower. Willpower that give you, of course, the development of all of those inner powers of the civilization of your being. This is how you have to understand the two witnesses. The two witnesses, of course, are two ganglionic cords related with the caduceus of mercury, which ascend. When you work with the two witnesses, ida pingala, or and of, yin and yang, Adam and Eve, hunapur and ishbalanke, the mythological gods of Rome or Greece? Apollo and Artemis. Apollo, of course, is the god, is the sun. You know that. And Artemis is the goddess of the moon. So if you examine that, you find how in different, in different ways. Here, for instance, in the letters, the Hebrew letters, we always uh, a point as Bav, masculine, and Zain, feminine. So you have to be familiar with that, but how is applied in different ways. Because sometimes when we point the woman, we said, Heba, Eve, Ida, Ob, Yin. Because we are pointing different religion, different, different uh, aspects, how different religions or philosophies are pointing the same force. If we point the Mayan pantheon, we will say Ikshvalanke for the woman. But for the man, the positive, we call Hunapu. Hmm? And you have to, because Gnosis is always the knowledge that is hidden in different ways. As something that is coming into my mind right now, for instance, uh, from the previous lecture, which is the seventh, which is the warrior of right, the, of the tarot, we always uh, uh, say that, for instance, in the Nordics, that uh, this warrior is related with the rune Otila. You hear the hymn that always we play there, related with Otila, 
the God of war. This God of war, Otila, is also called Attila. But we are not referring, of course, to the warrior that came uh, uh, in ancient times that had that name. We are related, related with Otila. Od Odila is also called, which is called Odin, the god of war. This god of war, of course, is that force that we developed, which is willpower, telema, Otila. That we need in order to succeed in our work, because this is a great battle, it's a great work that we have to do. But all of this is done with willpower. But that willpower emerges, is the outcome of the union of the sun and the moon. The man and the woman, Adam and Eve. And this is something that is hidden within the letter Het. Now see, for instance, that uh, the law of the trogo auto egocrat that is the reciprocal nourishment of all the species acts in the universe and this is something normal how the force descends and ascends in order to the universe to exist because without without that reciprocal nourishment of forces everything will disappear one thing depends on the other but here, of course, related with the sun and the moon, we find also the duality of the two forces working in humanity. Because we know that the prophets are nourished with the solar light when they know how to combine the sun and the moon. But the opposite of the prophets are the sorcerers. The witches, the other names that you receive there, soothsayers, uh, uh, warlocks, that also develop a power, but lunar, meaning that they do not accomplish with the Law of the cosmic common trouble auto ecocrat, they don't return the light to the Father. They just keep working with Verra, with the force that descends. They keep fornicating. Because the energy that descends from the absolute through the ray of creation goes into Malkut and down into Klipoth. That's normal. And from there, a sense in any macrocosmos planet through the law of evolution. Which we are going to talk about this just to point this. The law of evolution or the dissension of that light from the absolute down to all the tree of life reaching Malkut, which is the lowest of the Sephira, then keeps going down to the ninth sphere of the center of the planet, which is Klipot Hell. And that's Verra. You see, this is how it is ends. Talking cosmically. From there, ascends in the fourth dimension, which is in symbol of the letter Zain, up again to the tree of life. That's normally in any planet, in any sun, in any moon, in any cosmic force. To how this sense in a sense. But here, of course, as human beings, we are submitted to that energy. When we reach when Malkut, when the energy reaches Malkut, we as human beings, we receive commandments. We say, you should learn to return that force by your own will. And that's why the commandment, you shall not eat from that fruit. You should learn how to transform that in order to create within you the microcosmos, the man into the image of God. 
But the people that do not do that, the souls that do not do that, the force keep going through the law of fornication because that, uh, uh, that's normal, mechanical. Any animal, this push the force because that the force of gravity, we will say it, the law of falling. See, the law of falling or the law of gravity pushes that energy that comes from the ends of down to the ninth sphere into hell. And that's why people normally fornicate. It's easy because that goes with the involution of the force. To return is to control nature. To work with the letter Zain is to control the four elements and not to allow that force that normally mechanically go down into hell to return it, to, to keep it and return it to the Father. That's the birth of the prophet. That's the birth of the child of God. If you do not do that, the four descends normally into hell and take you with it. And this is precisely what happened with this humanity, the souls of this humanity. They keep fornicating, so their soul go descend with the force of involution, which is go to the ninth sphere and go into hell. And mechanically, of course, they go to the ninth sphere, they are disintegrated as ego, and then after that they return mechanically to the law of evolution, the letter Zain, into the fourth dimension again. But that's just following the mechanicity of nature. And that's why the Master Samael Umbeor said very clear in one of his books, or many books, Jave, the demon, Jave, that is the king of Klipoth, made of that dissension, of that falling into, uh, of that force into the night sphere, a religion, a mystic. And there are many people, as the Master Samael explains in the Eighth Arcanum, that make of fornication, make of the orgasm, the spasm, a religion, a mysticism. And they say that they will, will awake the force of Zain, or the force of Enoch, in other words, or the force of Moses, by fornicating. That's impossible. The force of Moses, or the force of Enoch, that ascends in Zain, in order to return to the father, Keter, works only if we avoid the orgasm, the spasm, and the sexual act. If we don't do that, we descend with the mechanicity of the ray of creation into Klippoth the nine layers of hell. And there we follow the mechanism, which most of people, most of the souls, always follow. Because the, en the, the, the entering into the kingdom of God to be born again is a matter of sexual transmutation. It's not belief. It's creation. And for that you have to learn how to return the force as human being. Because an animal, an irrational animal, cannot do that. They don't know. They just follow the mechanicity of nature. They fornicate. They spill. It's normal for them. But we are receiving the gift of the intellect, reasoning, in order to develop that. That is what in, in Kabbalah is called razon le cabel, willpower to receive, but that is a work will power to return the force in order to receive the inheritance of God in the spinal column. Because when we do that, and then we develop in our hunchback here in the spinal column, that light that unites Zain and Bav, that unites Adam and Eve, and then Enoch is being born in us. Or the, or, or, or the prophet Moses. But it is necessary for the Messiah to come first. Before the Messiah comes, it is necessary to Eliah to appear. That Eliah, that force of Eliao, is the force that descends into the spinal column. 
through Ida. And then we return it, and then you become a prophet. Easy, right? To say it, of course. But that's the work, the whole alchemical work hidden within the letter uh, Het. The transformation of that force that is done through the two witnesses, Ida and Pingala. That's why you find there that the scale of justice, which is the uh, two forces, they are related with the kidneys. When we read uh, uh, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, uh, the chakras of the kidneys, we find that it says, I am the one that searches the kidneys and the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your deeds. What deeds? Sexual deeds. Because the kidneys, the scale, are the one that control the sexual force. We said in other lectures that above the kidneys, we have the suprarenal glands. And above the suprarenal glands, the chakras of chastity. There is where the Lord sees, you are chaste, I am transmuting. Okay, let me see your chakra of your kidneys. And then he said, yes, you are saying the truth. Because I see that the chakra of your kidneys are white. But if you see the red color, bloody color red, it says, you are a liar. Because the balance, the kidneys are showing that you don't have the sword. The sword, precisely, that the woman is holding there in his hand is the willpower, the kundalini that one develops when one is in chastity. But it's the woman that holds it. Why? Because that chastity depends of Zain. Chastity depends of Ob. Heva, the Divine Mother. That is what gives the Zain. You find there, for instance, in the Arthurian legend, that the one that gives the sword, Scalibur, is the Lady of the Lake. The lake is the waters. And the Lady, the Divine Mother, that gives you the, the sword, if you know how to control the forces of the mother, because the forces of the mother are below in your sexual glands. So you realize how everything is related, how the initiates were, I mean, left the message in different ways, in different areas for the whole of humanity. There is no difference among those religions, always the same meaning, the same, the same wisdom hidden. So that's why is there's a woman there, because the woman, the feminine aspect, is the one that gives the sword to the magician. Whether this magician is a female or male. Because the sexual organs are always related with Chava, Eve. And Adam, Yod, is always related with the brain. Whether in a male or female creature or human being. So when we said Adam, we are referring to the, to, to the brain. Eve, sexual organs. Is it? But you, you, fi you had to find that. But also, Adam, Picala. Eve, Ida. Open up, Sain and Bav. You have to be familiar with these terms in order to you to understand what we leave in the website. Because we write the, all the words. And sometimes people said, what is this? All of this, all, Ida, Heva. It's the same thing. We can even add more. But you have to be familiar with the two polarities, which are hidden in this symbol, of course, of the woman, of the eighth arcanum, which holds the scale. Which all, obviously the scale, as you see, related with the kidneys, are also related to how we managed the two polarities, Ida and Pingala. Well, the book of Revelation is the one that takes and talks about that the two witnesses will appear in the time of the end. Well, we will say that the explanation of these two witnesses are appearing now in the times of the end. Elias and Enoch or Moses are inside of you. Ida and Pingala, Adam and Eve. <coughs> These two witnesses, 
says the book of Revelation, had the power to prophesy. Uh, 1,260 days. When you uh, take those numbers, one, Aleph, two, Bet, 60, Zamech, which makes ma make the word Abbas. This word Abbas or Abbas is a Haramaic word. Jesus of Nazareth says, uh, uh, Hail Abba, or related to, to God, uh, Abbas. These other, other uh, scriptures there, other phrases where Abbas is related with the Father. And in, it's coming into my mind now the word Barabbas. Bar, in Aramaic, means son. Abbas, father. The son of the father, Barabbas. Now you said, how come? So the son of the father is Barabbas? Yes. And Jesus of Nazareth is the son of the father too. But here, the duality. Didn't you understand or you forgot that the ego is inside of us? And within the ego is Tifereth, the soul, the consciousness, bottle up. That is Barabbas. Isn't, isn't Barabbas the son of the father too? Yes, of course. Barabbas has to be annihilated. The ego has to be annihilated in order to liberate the particulars, the particles of the father hidden within, which, which are the son, part of the son. Hmm? Who is the son? The sun is Tifereth. But when you reach the initiation, when you read the fifth initiation of Mayor Mysteries, you discover that part of your soul, Tifereth, beauty, is hidden within Barabbas. And that's why you see in the Bible when it says, who do you want me to liberate? Jesus, who is the son of the father, or Barabbas, who is also the son of his father. Who of the two? And then the people say, oh, oh, the ego, of course, because we like fornication, we like anger, we like all of that. All of the crimes of Barabbas. Liberate Barabbas and leave Jesus, who is without a sin, united there in the sixth dimension with Tiferet, crucify him. And this is how we always say, we always are in favor of the ego, which is the son of the father too. Because everything that comes from above, from the forces that we are explaining here, is from the Father. That's why the Master Samael says the night sphere, sex, is the source of gods, angels, human beings, animals, beasts, and demons. That force creates all of that. Or what you, what you said, good and evil. No. Just a variety of beings. Demons, of course, inhabited. Klipoth, hell, inferno. They are inhabited. So we belong to Klipoth. We want to go out of Klipoth. We want to be saved of the second death, which is the annihilation of Barabbas by the forces of nature. When the people say, liberate Barabbas and crucify Jesus, they are saying, let us go into hell into Klippas, because nature will disintegrate us in hell anyhow. We choose the lunar path. By we the Gnostics says, no, nah, we don't want to choose the lunar path. Death to Barabbas. Or as we said in Egypt, death to Seth and his red demons. We want the death of Seth. We want between Seth here is not the third son of Adam and Eve. Is in, in, in Egyptian terms is is a, a Barabbas. We want the death of Barabbas, the son of Abbas. But Jesus also is the son of Abbas. But it is in the positive way, you know, because there is two ways: the solar way and the lunar way. 
The solar way is a way of the initiation in which we take advantage of the two witnesses in order for the Son of God to appear within us. And that's the Son of Abbas in the positive way. This is what you have to understand because there are many people that talk about how come Barabbas seems the Son of the Father and Jesus is the Son of the Father too. But they have to understand the duality, the forces of the consciousness. One is free and the other is bottled up into sin in the initiate. Or as uh, the master Hil Hilarion, which is Paul of Tarsus, stated, the heavenly man is Jesus, Barabbas, the son of Abbas. And the terrestrial man is Barabbas. The two forces. But the one has to die and the other has to go up. So then you find the, why the word Abbas is formed on 1, 2, 6, and 0. 1,260 days. This is the prophet. Now, the, those, they have the power to prophesy 1,260 days. The two witnesses. And the form Abbas means that the power of prophecy comes from Abbas. But in this case, if you make the addition of all the numbers, you have the number 9. 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 0 is 9, the nine sphere. Meaning that the two kind of prophets, prophets come from the same source. If you awake the Kunda buffer, you become a sorcerer. And you can bring from Klipoth your prophecies. But if you awake the Kundalini and you make the letter Het in yourself, then you become a great prophet, Enoch, the one that sees, or like Moses. But because you are, you are uniting the two witnesses. That's why in the Bible it says that Jesus appears in the middle of Elias and Moses. And it's precisely in the transfiguration. And that transfiguration appears and happens in the letter Hod. Because Hod is the astral light. Hod precisely is that fifth dimension, the astral light, where the forces of Haim, the life forces of the tree of life are there. That's why it says that in the astral light we find Inri, the dragon of Medea, the heavenly dragon. And all those forces that we're talking here is in Hod. And this is where Jesus appears. Hod, the transfiguration, the two forces between two witnesses, the two Elias and Moses. Because Jesus in this case represents the fire that rises in the spinal column. So you see that, and of course, Kabbalistically, we state it, and we say that Hod is governed by the moon. Many Kabbalists say that Hod is governed by, uh, by Mercury, but they are wrong. It's governed by the moon. And Yesod is also governed by the moon. You see the two polarities there, related with the feminine force. That's why Hod here, which is the eighth Sephirah, from above to below, is related with this Arcanum, number eight, where the woman appears because it's feminine force. But of course, it's because the light of the sun reflects into us through the moon. And we have to polarize ourselves with the positive aspect of the moon, which is related with Jehovah. Jehovah represents the positive ray of the moon, but the negative ray of the moon is represented by Nahemah and Lilith, which are the two negative forces that appear in the psyche of the human being when he or she fornicates, which is that Lilith and Nahemah are two psychological aspects hidden 
within the psyche of my body and everybody. It's not like just, oh, this person. Everybody has that within. That's why we had to fight against Nahemah first and then against Lilith in the initiation through steps. And this is how you understand how this feminine aspect, and many, especially in, in this uh, Judeo Christian religion, how always sin is pointing to the woman. But those igno ignorabuses that do not know this explanation of me male female, they always point the physical woman and they renounce the woman thinking that that's the way. But it's not by renouncing the female aspect as you were going to, by transforming that. And it's not the woman, physically speaking, but that female aspect that we have within, in the psyche. Because the woman also has, as you see in the website, many other symbols in a positive way, when she transmutes their sexual force. And then is Bethsheba. All the wives of the prophets in the Bible are represented by that positive force when rises, which is feminine. The Divine Mother is feminine. Kundalini is feminine because coming from below. Everything that comes from below up to the Father is feminine, but has always the two polarities. And this is precisely what we have to study this, which is alchemy. This is how we understand this. Otherwise, you fall into the mistake of many people that always point in, in how you could condemn the woman when they don't understand that Heva or Eve of the Bible is referring to that sexual feminine force that we couldn't control and is related with the sexual organs because the sexual organs are the ones that create and the woman is always related with creation and that's why the feminine aspect is always related with Malkut Mm -hmm. everything comes from the woman right but don't blame the woman physically blame yourself which is your feminine aspect that you don't know how to control in this case as a male the feminine aspect is the sexual organ that we have below and Adam is the brain as well with the woman so then when we transform those forces and we know how to control the feminine aspect which is related with the mechanicity of nature, procreation, all of that. And then we enter into the mysteries of Het, the letter related with life. And we enter into the kingdom of heaven as prophets. But remember there that we find the duality. When we enter these studies, we always find the duality. Those that follow the clipothic way are related with the moon. It's called the lunar path, in which they don't fight against their feminine aspect. They just let their feminine aspect to work through them, which is procreation. And what they do, they fornicate and they go to clipoth because they follow Lilith and Ahema which are the aspect that fornicates, of the degeneration. That's why it is written that Lilith and Nahema are the two spheres related with Klippoth. And humanity develops in those two spheres. But the humanity above that rises up into the nine Sephiroth are related with the other two aspects of the woman in chastity, which we uh, talked very extensively in the Seven Arcana, which is called, of course, uh, Sheva, the daughter of the Seven, Bet Sheva, or the Queen of Sheva, which were, of course, you see here, for instance, the two aspects here. Uh, the wife of David, the one that made you a king, was Bet Sheva, the daughter of the Seven. And from this, uh, uh, from these two forces, were born Solomon or Soliman, the solar man. This Soliman or solar man, Solomon, were born from the daughter of the seven and David. 
But then he marry or he get involved with the Queen of Sheba. Because it's written that when the Queen of Sheba, which is the Queen of the Seventh, or the Queen of Shabbat, the mysteries of the Seventh, which is Saturn, Binah, knew about Solomon and his wisdom, he says, I will try him. I will test him. And he was carrying with herself the Holy Grail. And delivered to Solomon the Holy Grail after testing him, asking questions. But of course, that's a symbol. Oh, yeah, to receive the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is a symbol of the feminine yoni, the sexual organ of the woman. That's why everybody can acquire immortality through the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is related. As you know now, everybody is discussing about Jesus and Mary Magdalene. No one can receive the power of the sword or the power of the magician without a woman. Obviously, Jesus of Nazareth had his wife. He was not a single person like many people think. He worked also with the Holy Grail. He worked also with the forces of Zion, of Hava. But he ought to be different. All the prophets did that. This is how the prophet emerges from within. And this is how the prophet receives from above and teaches. Because head is related with the power of speech. But that power of speech, or, or, or speech of talking it's a power that comes from above, from the Father, when you receive. Kabel, Kabbalah, with the power. Because there is another power to receive as well, which is the lunar way. When you fornicate, of course, you are opening the doors to clip off. And when the sorcerer receives the power of hell, and his powers develop in a negative way, but the fire is not coming from above, it's coming from Klippoth, the inverted tree of life. And that's the sorcerer. But both comes from the same. You see, that's why it is written that the great battle between angels and demons is always happening in the astral light. And the astral light is Hod, is the arcanum number eight, is the Caduceus of Mercury. There is a fight. The black magicians, the demons, they polarize the two forces of Father and Eve in a negative way and develop in Nahemaic and Lilith their powers in Klippoth. And they develop, of course, and receive a sword. That sword has power only in Klippoth. That's why you find demons with swords. But the sword of the demons is in the left side because it is the power of the Kunda buffer, the tail of Satan, while the powers of the angels are always in the right. The sword of an angel is always in the right side, never in the left. And that power is the Kundalini, the Divine Mother. That's Bet Sheba, the daughter of the seven. That's the sword. How you see also that the woman, Winever. Winever is the one that put the sword and give the knight, the power of the knight to, to, the, to the great uh, knights of the round table. That's the queen. Betsheba, the queen, Winever, and all the queens of all religions. So then here in this arcanum, you have to understand the duality inside and outside. And that's why it was always a great battle, a great war between the powers of the sun and the powers of the moon since the beginning of creation. The legions of demons, of course, they align on the ray of the moon, which is mechanical while the powers of the children of God always are related with the sun, the positive forces. 
and the place of the battle is the astral light, Hod. And the power is in the Caduceus of, of Mercury. And this is how you understand that those that crystallize the negative force, or they crystallize negatively in Glipoth, during their prophecy, it doesn't rain. This is written in the book of Revelation. These two witnesses have the power to shut heaven to the fornicators. Because if we utilize the sexual force in a negative way, from Yesod, and then the two witnesses shut the doors of heaven. And they don't give power to the black magicians, meaning that the rain, it doesn't rain in the time of their prophecies. The black magician said this and that, etc. And all the prophecies are accomplished, but in hell, in Klippoth, never above. Black magicians never enter into the promised land or into the world to come, which is precisely the internal sephiroth. Then, of course, the two witnesses close doors. The two witnesses only open the doors to those that know how to be in chastity, how to obey the law of the sixth commandment, commandment. You shall not fornicate, or you shall not eat of the tree of good and evil. And that's why it's written that the two witnesses have power to bring any kind of sickness into Malkut, the earth according to the evil deeds. It was happening right now because people do not know these meanings. They are having a lot of sicknesses in the physical world because of the evil use or the negative use of the sexual force. But when you know how to transmute the sexual energy, fire comes out of the witnesses and devour your enemies. Those enemies are the egos, the sins that you have within, because the power of the two witnesses have the power to destroy the negative uh, aspects of our psychology. You have questions? Job, of course. It is necessary to understand that the Arcanum 8 encloses all the ordeals. And of course, it reminds us that this is the, the Arcanum number 8 is the, the Arcanum of Job, the same Job. And who is the one that plays all the tests and ordeals to Job? Shatan, or Satan in other words. But in Hebrew you said, Satan is written with three letters. Shin, Tet, and Nun. Shatan. The fire. Shin, descending to Tet, the serpent, down. Because the Nun is a force or the sexual force in the waters going down to fornication. That's Shatan. And you said that Shatan is the adversary. That's the meaning of the word, adversary. And also the accuser before God. He said, how come this Shatan is accusing me before God? Let me tell you, when you start working in this uh, esoteric path, Shatan will accuse you all the time before God. Why? Because Shatan represents fornication, represents the way in which the forces were polarized negatively through fornication, through adultery, which are the source of all the sins that we have within. That's why lust is called the original sin. It's not the sin, it's not precisely the evil that we have, the one that accuses before God. You can say, oh, I didn't sin, I didn't do this. And Shatan says, I am the fire which you polarize negatively. You stone me. 
Because that fire, shin, is a fire of sexuality. And if you abuse of the sex, you polarize that fire in a negative way. So here you find Shatan, the tail of Shatan, the Kunda buffer. It's the same fire of God, but polarized negatively because of your sins. So this Shatan is chained, as is written in, the, in mythology, to the rock of Yesod. And the only way, as says, to liberate him is another in the ego. But then, Jehovah, Yod Chava, above, calls Shatan. So how do you see my servant Job? He is transmuting the sexual energy. You are Shatan. He is, you are the outcome of his previous actions of fornication and adultery. And Shatan says, yeah, he annihilated a lot of ego, but still I am slave of the rock. I am chained to the rock still of sex. If you allow me, I will test you and see that really, since I am alive still, he is still mocking you. He says, okay, it's in your hands. Do whatever you want to do because you're still in chain in the rock. And say that Shatan descends and put uh, uh, with the power of God, which is the fire, a lot of uh, ordeals to Job. But Job keeps his path of chastity, transmutation, annihilation of the ego, and defeats Shatan. That he made it because Shatan was made for him when he was crystallizing the negative energy or crystallizing the energy in a negative way. That means that when you enter into the letter uh, Het, or the number 8, the 8th Arcanum, that's the ordeal, the test. You are tested to see if in reality you are working in yourself. And the one that does it is Shatan, because he is the one that is black, like the carbon by the charcoal, very black. But you made it black. And he's suffering because he's the fire of God bottled up into your lust. The tail has to disappear. But Shatan, that knows you very well because he's mingled with your saints, with your evilness, right? That Shatan, he will accuse you always. In this path, you have to transform that Shatan into Lucifer, the beautiful angel of light. He wants to become Lucifer again without sin. But unfortunately, that depends on our work. If we don't annihilate the ego, if we don't accomplish 100% for the work, Lucifer won't be liberated. He will be Shatan, black. And that's why any initiate is always tested. It's always tested. And the great test is in sex. Temptation. And that's job. Different things, different karma that comes to you. He says, oh, Shatan is the adversary, is the enemy of God, and he's treating me bad, but I believe in God, and I am good, and he's treating me bad. No, no, no. He's putting you what you deserve. Because to that fire is how the law of karma acts. You see the scale here? Anything that you receive in your physical body, in your mental body, in your astral body, or anybody, is coming through Shatan. Meaning through your karma, through your evil deeds, which began with a sexual orgasm. Because this is how Shatan started to develop love. And that's the Arcanum kind of 8. But when you are in this path, you want to be liberated of that, you want to be free of that, well, be aware that you have, you enter in this path in order to pay what you owe. Or you don't want it. You don't want to pay what you owe. Well, nature will take that debt down there in Klipoth if you don't want it. And it will be very painful too. In two ways, the lunar or the solar. Through the solar, you develop wisdom. Through the lunar, nothing. And it's very painful. Because the left is Ida. Because the left. Why does the woman have the sword in the left? Because we have to control the left. The left is Ida. The left is all. The left is Hava. 
left side. We have to control all that ego that we have within, which is the left-handed ego, by acquiring the sword. And he has it in the left because he's a woman. This is indicating everything. But he says, okay, you want the sword? Control me. I am Chava. I am Ov. I am Zain. Transmute your energy. And then I will give you the sword, which is in my left, because I am the left. I am Ida. I am Ob. And you have to do it by balancing the two forces of the scale, by requiring chastity. Yeah, because that represents the law of the scale, which is karma. I mean, don't touch it and touch it. Right? Meaning, have sexual act, but transmute. Don't reach the spasm. Don't reach the orgasm. Because the scale is related with the kidneys, with the suprarenals. And that is measuring the chastity. Touch, but do not touch. Enter. The woman, do the sexual act, but don't reach your orgasm. Withdraw. That's the meaning of that, because the law is there, you see? It's very easy to understand, I guess. You have another question? Yeah, of course. When you are, uh, that's why you have to be always attentive when you work in your, in your the annihilation of your, your ego. Because the energy of that, of negative force, is always uh, approaching you to lust, to anger, to pride, through greed, through many ways. And uh, the main thing here is to use the letter Zayin in the right way, which is to return the light to the Father. That's the meaning of the letter Zayin, to return. But you see, that return is only possible when you are in the balance, balancing the, the two forces, Idap and Gala, which is the Het, the life within you. That means that through the Kundalini, you have quite the degrees when you are in balance, when you are controlling the two forces when you are returning the energy above. To return the energy is to transform lust into chastity, to transform anger into sweetness, into love, to transform greed into altruism, to transform laziness into diligence. All that is a transformation because we created that within. And that's the power of the tale of Satan. The power of the tale of Satan is in the sin, the seven capital sins that we have within. That's why it's written that the beast, 666, had seven heads. Without transmutation, any, uh, is, is any other energy going back just to practice and work on ego? The whole work is transmutation. We begin with sexual transmutation, because that is the origin of the ego. Remember that I said, lust is called the original sin, because lust originated the other egos. So we began in chastity by transmuting, as a single person of Mary, the sexual force. And we continue that transmutation through the different levels, transmuting all the defects that we have into virtues. And that's the work of meditation and by applying the sexual force as well. The sword. Mm -hmm. And there's a process. It's always transmutation. Of course, the main thing is lust. Because that's a kind of ego that is always present there. That's why Shatan. You see, the work 
the ordeal of Job comes at the end, before the resurrection, in which the initiate has to pay the kamaduro. What is kamaduro? Kamaduro is the karma of fornication. And that sin is paid only with death. So therefore, before you pay that karma, you pass your deal of job. And it's Shatan, the one that is putting that test. Because Shatan is precisely the memory, the story of your past sinful life. But with the death, with that impure sickness that you are going to receive, you are going to pay and to be clean completely. And then you resurrect. That's the resurrection of the dead. Only the dead resurrect. If you are alive, you cannot resurrect. You need to die. Psychologically. Well, we always apply, and when we explain, for instance, the, the descent of that light from the Ein Sof, we are explaining from the, from the point of the world of Atziluth, which is the Lord of God. But when we are talking about we're returning directly from our willpower, that force, we are talking in the world of Asia, which is Malkut, and the place where we are. We have to learn from the very bottom. We have to return the light from Malkut. Then from Yetzirah, then from Bria, and then from Atziluth, in order to return into the Absolute. Yeah? What are the three steps in the life that you're doing? Well, the three steps, obviously, are the three bodies that we had to build, astral, mental, and causal, which is precisely the three vestures or three garments of the soul that we have to have already built. That's why the woman is on top of it. Meaning that you already are a newborn master, a prophet, but you have to clean. And that's why you see that the serpent, the symbol of the infinite, which is this uh, circle below the waters, is related with the waters of the Asad, sexual waters, and with the three bodies that we already have. Meaning that the whole cleanse, the whole work that we have to do, is with the Divine Mother, with the serpent. Yeah. Three levels. The three levels of the initiation, which is beginner, companions, and masters, which are all very explained in the masonry. It's always the three. Or as we in Gnosticism said, first chamber, which is this one, when you receive the knowledge. Second chamber, when you are a companion, you are already working on the path very seriously. And third chamber, for masters. But this is just symbolically. Of course. doesn't mean that if you are second chamber, you are already a great in Egypt. No, it's just symbolic. The cause of the serpent that's in the water. No. Nope. Of course, the gold is in relation with, with, uh, with the sun, right? This is the fire. The sun is uh, the Leo, right? And this is precisely coming into um, to my mind. Uh, uh, Ares or Arech or Arech, Ares or Arech is the word that uh, is said in Hebrew for lion, the lion. We say the lion of Judah. Ares. And Ares is Aries, Leo, or in other words, the fire of Samael. This is something here with the name of Samael that I want to explain to you. You said that we are explaining here the word, uh, the lecture, uh, the, I mean, the knowledge of Samael on the or. And you find the word Samael itself is the logos of Mars, which is above. Related with Ares, the lion of Ares, the lion, the fire. That's Samael above. And then on is a sexual force. From above comes to below. That's why Samael governs. 
Aries, which is the head, and Scorpio, which is the sexual organs. This is Samael on. But in order to unite those two forces and to be a prophet, you need to put light in your bab, in your spinal column. And that is Ve'or. So the name means encloses above and below and the middle. The whole thing is made, the whole doctrine is given in order for you to Christify yourself or don't to do it. Samael, above, on in the sex, and the or in the spinal column. That is the letter Chet, Samael, on the or. Do you have any other lecture, I mean, other question? Lecture, no, I am going to give the lecture. If not, thank you very much. And the next lecture will be the nine, the hermit. This will be important because what we said today will help to understand the next lecture. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,